This is very very scientifically and meticulously designed plan for direct IAS aspirants. We would like to implement this for our five year students because our students would have got a lot of uh, clarity about certain things regarding UPS, especially foundation. Now, let us push towards a uh, direct IAS level, especially when it comes to answer writing and daily MCQ practice and also current affairs and CSAT. What is the actual requirement of UPSC? Where is the lacuna that we find for serious aspirants who are, who are very much talented and who have been preparing for many years but still failing in exams, especially in preliminary examination itself. In the initial stage of preliminary examination, they get failed in various times, irrespective of their extraordinary knowledge in various subjects. What is the reason behind is due to lack of balance in various components of our preparation part. Okay. One thing, what is the balance required? For example, students who have been preparing, the aspirants, if you want to laugh, you can go outside and laugh there. Don't come to this institute. Okay? First thing. And it is for you because we have planned uh, how many years will it take? Because to plan a 215 pages of schedule, it will take at least one year time. Okay? So it is for you and not only for you but also for students who are coming here for residential campus to crack this examination who fail here by 10 marks or 15 marks who attended interview also. They will be coming and practicing this schedule here because I want to integrate that schedule with you because here not less than that of their, their capability. I strongly believe in certain aspirants who are preparing here that their answer rating ability and their ability to understand the MCQ pattern is much ahead of other students who are failing here, who have already gone to interview and missed by just 10 to 15 months. Even you are able to crack it. And here you can see few students who have been preparing, around 10 people are preparing this year mains UPSC, who have come here and preparing here. Have you seen the schedule for mains 2023 this year? You please go through the schedule also. It is posted in our Telegram channels. Okay. So, uh, the, the part of uh, just uh, coming to this next part, that most of the aspirants, irrespective of their ability to clear this exam, but still they are failing in certain parts because of lack of balance in various components. As I have mentioned, when preliminary notification comes, immediately they start preparing for preliminary examination, they stop writing for answering, they stop writing answers regularly. And they don't get updated with current affairs because they, uh, they lack a lot of time because they need to spend time for writing regular tests and also completing various subjects which are in a bit, like, little bit of gap in their minds. First point. Second point is they need to balance this uh, examination with respect to CSAT too because CSAT has become very complex nowadays and even IITMs are also failing in CSAT and our students are clearing this exam because of their regular practice in the CSAT examination. Only thing that CSAT requires is regular practice, nothing else. But students who are neglecting it until the notification comes, even after notification also, they will not spend much time for the CSAT. They will neglect it and finally they are failing. So have you seen that CSAT in many, uh, this year CSAT, most of the aspects failed in CSAT, though they have cleared this paper one. So this is the reason for last three years. So they have to balance one side, the GS part and also the CSAT. Regularly it is required to practice each of the components and also you have to write weekend tests for CSAT. Nowadays, now onwards, if, apart from your regular classes, but you should practice one concept regularly. That is why we have given and important in your regular schedule. And you must practice it. We will give you the questions. And you should discuss yourself how to draw uh, different models for CSAT answer and to get Spot, I mean, uh, how, how to get answer in a faster pace? Because in exam hall, two minutes is not sufficient to understand the question for CSAT event. That is the standard of question that they are setting now. Let us uh, practice regularly the CSAT as part of our preparation. First, so therefore, therefore, the preliminary examination will be balanced. But while preparing for prelims, they are unable to focus on contemporary issues on the one side, and at the same time, they are unable to practice regular means. This is another problem, right? Until preliminary examination is over, they will not even test the optional subject between the notification and also the preliminary examination, right? They will not. And also, they will disorient, they, they will get disoriented with respect to this 
uh, ethics and also essay. They won't even practice ethics essay until they clear the preliminary examination. So just imagine immediately after uh, preliminary examination, they have to focus 250 marks ethics, essay, and also 500 marks optional. Apart from daily answer writing and updating with current affairs. Is it possible for an aspirant to complete all these tasks within 80 days? It is very difficult for them. And finding what is the problem in the pre preparation process for an aspirant irrespective of his good scores in the grand test for each subject, uh, each respective subjects. Because if I want to conduct a history grand test for you, you will be writing history and you will be reading only history in this entire week. Sometimes you may not be reading for two days, but you will do night out for two days, exactly before two days of the exam, and you will crack it in top five. But what about real exam? Real exam, you have to write essay this day, and immediately the next day morning you have to write history, society, and in history also, in art and culture orientation is little different, post independence, world history. Their weightage is less, but their syllabus is used. Okay, and at the same time, they need to prepare for world physical geography and any geography part. And various geographical phenomena, they are a little bit uh, interlinked with research and management areas. So you, you need multi-dimensional approach. For one paper, immediately after lunch, you have to write the GS2. That is, quality, governance, social justice, international relations. And again, you need to twist your brain. The next day morning already you will be exhausted by 5 o'clock because writing 4,000 words in the morning, 4,000 respectively in the afternoon. And uh, you will be exhausted and you will go and sleep there. I'm coming in the morning, you're waking up early in the morning at 5 o'clock and coming to the center, exam center by 8 o'clock in the morning. Is it possible for you to twist your brain again for economy, disaster management, environment, security challenges, everything, for science and technology, for GS3 and also GS4. Ethics integrative aptitude is not a subject Unlike GS topics, you, cannot, you, you, you may not be focusing only for one month for ethics integrity aptitude because it is internalization. You need to internalize ethics integrity aptitude as regular process, a daily process. So if you stop preparing for history for one month, but if I conduct the grand test, if you can revise within a week, you can cope up with the history subject. Similarly, geography, environment, economy, all GS components can be revised within a week and you can write the test. But if you stop preparing CSAT, if you stop preparing, I mean, internalizing ethics every day and taking a gap of at least one or two months time to write any test, what will happen? Your mind gets disoriented. It is very difficult for you to complete entire ethics. And it is not about completion of ethics. It is about application of ethics, internalization of ethics, assessment and analysis, and your answer writing orientation. So you will get disoriented with the ethics part. It is very difficult for you to complete them within a week because you are not habituated, you, are, you have come away from that ethics part. So, and also if you give, you know, gap, if you give at least two to three months of gap for CSAT practice, if you don't practice it, what will happen? Again, you need to go to those concepts. You will not be able to attempt them. Though you would, despite your ability to solve them uh, effectively previously in the test, after giving three months of gap again, you will get some certain lag in us in this preparation process. So, CSAT and ethics are part of your general breathing process. In you have to sleep with them, you have to wake up with them. You have to eat and everything. It should become part of your daily routine life. Therefore, it will be balanced and at the same time, while balancing optional ethics, essay, GS answer writing and contemporary issues and CET and CSAT and prelims GS1. And MCQ orientation is different from JDI answer writing. Answer writing even within the components of answer writing, essay orientation is different from ethics orientation and also the GS components. So you need to be able to balance all the components equitably according to their need, according to their expectation and demand. You need to adapt yourself. This is what, this is an exam of balance. That is why I have given you clearly in our uh, uh, schedule, in my forward also, and uh, go through this kind of a schedule once again. So, if it is not visible, no problem. See, every day you will be having two GS subjects. You need to prepare and attempt the question in the evening. Not in the evening, exactly I want to wake you up in the early morning. 
because you you would have prepared till six o'clock in the morning, and immediately you are coming here and writing the exam. What about your spontaneous ability? In the original exam, what what is actual original exam demanding? What is the actual demand of the original exam? You have to recall what you prepared for last one year. Is it? Therefore, what is the actual skill in the examination hall that you must have developed? In shape? you must have had a crisp notes for it. First point. And second, you must be able to recall and reproduce within the time prescribed in the exam hall. And immediately you should be able to respond to that question. That is your spontaneous ability. What about your spontaneity? How will you develop that spontaneity? Because immediately after preparing for the exam, you should not write. You should give at least 10 to 12 hours of gap. And without any revision, after giving at least 10 to 12 hours of gap, if you start attempting something, what will happen? Naturally, you will develop your spontaneous recalling ability. If you have prepared for this test till 10 o'clock in the morning, if you are prepared for this test till 6 o'clock in the morning, in the evening. Therefore, you are writing exam immediately what you have read just before. It will not develop your actual skill. So whatever you have prepared yesterday, without even revising the text, the revision must have been completed by evening 7.30 or 10 o'clock night. And you should give some gap for your sleep. Immediately after you wake up, you should be able to write that answer. And the fresh hours, not only answer but also MCQs, you should practice them. Okay, this is also a skill oriented, skill development uh, uh, orientation. This is. And two GS subjects, for each subject you will be getting five MCQs, so 10 MCQs every day. Every day. Okay, next, one CSAT topic. If you go through on CSA topic, here number system on day one and number system will be continued for next day, next two days respectively because it is level one, level two, level three. Sometimes I will give you surprise that you will be giving, you will be getting level three in the on the day one only regarding that topic. Okay, you should be able to face that challenge. You should always be prepared to unpredictability, isn't it? Recently, I have conducted a test series named Mission Yodhan Year and students who have not known the kind of pattern that UBC conducted. Previously, it has conducted a kind of pattern, it has adopted a new pattern that is one page only correct, two page only correct. But it hasn't given any non-eliminating options. The statements which they have given were having elimination options as previous year. Only in the master following pattern of questions, they have given non-elimination kind of questions. But in mission Yodhan part, even in group one preliminary examination, we have given in our test, every test contains at least one fourth of the questions, statement based but without elimination. So only one statement is true, only one statement is, uh, only two statements are true. Or sometimes we have given only one statement is false, only two statements are false. Our one statement is true, two, two statements are false. Likewise, we have twisted also sometimes. Difficult. So, that kind of unpredictability helped the students to clear this year's mains examination. Around 400 people followed this test series, but rigorously, how many people might follow, I don't know. But 20 people cleared preliminary examination this year. 10 people are preparing here and 10 people are preparing off, off, online. We have created a WhatsApp group and training them to clear this examination this year, 2023. I hope at least two ranks will come and four may be selected to interview. This is my hope and expectation. How, whatever it may be, that is our hard work and their hard work. From your side, you should contribute. So this is actually a strategy which is not only the pattern followed by existing one, but also followed by the futuristic one. Right? This, is, this, this kind of futuristic approach can only come after doing a lot of re research and development. So this kind of content development involves R&D and content development and also, and also the feedback and evaluation part. Okay? So backward linkage and forward linkage in terms of UPSC language. Backward linkage is R&D, forward linkage is 
feedback evaluation. In between, you will be having content. Right? So this is our approach. Every day, you have five MCQs from current effects, five MCQs from CSAT on a respective topic, and five MCQs from one GS topic, and five MCQs from another GS topic. So two GS subjects, one CSAT, one current affairs topic. You must be, you must have completed entire preparation this day, and immediately tomorrow morning, early in the morning, you'll be writing the test. Okay. Just finish off your entire preparation by seven o'clock in the evening. It's just by five o'clock in the evening. Six to seven thirty, revise them, and have uh, uh, then when have your dinner and have a soft sleep. And if you want to, have, uh, you can also. Uh, I mean, participate in sports early in the morning after writing the test. Okay, one hour is test time, and again one hour is revision time. And rewrite the test once again, and go to sports and have some uh, kind of a recreation, whatever you want. And come here and prepare for this exam. And you'll be having the remaining components regarding ethics part and post independence, world history, governance. They will be going on. Okay, irrespective of that, you must follow the schedule. And you should be able to compete with the direct IAS aspirants. You should be the topper. You should. We should show the strength of integrated student. Okay. Students may get disappointed with you. <laughs> that is the expectation. Yes, they definitely you can make it. That is possible. So this is our uh, mentorship plan for next one year. Your juniors may have completed syllabus by second year then itself. Third year, by default, they will not be having any kind of class. They will be following this regular mentorship plan only. Okay, this is a regular practice session, and at the same time, I will be focusing exclusively exclusively on current affairs part. Okay, regularly I will be coming here and taking current affairs session. It is mostly interactive in nature and skill oriented. I will be giving MCQs. I will display previous year questions related to the topic. And I will ask you to answer that question. And similarly, sometimes I will ask you what type of questions may you may see set in future, and you have to set that question. Okay, it is reverse engineering rather than solving questions. You should set question on the topic. So regularly, I will be taking that session for one hour. Current affairs related topic. Okay, so this is our uh, process, and also I will be taking care of ethics and essay. Okay. The content and feedback evaluation related, and GS subjects almost. If I focus on current affairs, ethics essay, it it is mostly a kind of uh, dedicated mentorship because I may be able to guide you better than anybody else because I get to know various aspects. Because while teaching current affairs, I should have gone through all the static components. So it is a kind of preparation along with you, which I am doing for you, and you can do it better than anybody because. Regularly, you will be having a P2P analysis. In the first page, I have mentioned clearly that what are the actual requirements of an aspirant after having a foundation course. Most of the aspirants are facing this kind of problem with respect to preparation after having a foundation because everybody knows about few basic things regarding history, geography, policy, economy, environment, etc. Right? Basics are sufficient. And if a person look at looks at a new question paper. They will get related to certain concepts which they have been learning for last one to two years, right? If I ask you about stem cell technology, do you know something else or not? If I ask you about biotechnology, BT cotton, do you know something else or not? If I ask you about uh, fundamental rights and directive principles and bedrock between them, then you will be able to do something else. But what is the problem that you are unable to clear this exam is certain things that we haven't been imparted in our preparation process. What is the requirement that we need to impart is regular listening, speaking, reading, writing approach. L S R W. Okay. Suppose same current affairs issue. I will give you one task. You should monitor yourself under the C R observation of C R. You need to shoot yourself also. How you are performing well. How you are expressing things. Okay. I have so for, few, for for example i give you a concept i have taught you and i have also interacted with you i made you to set few questions and answers you got you got complete clarity about certain concept like uniform civil code you get everything about uniform civil code here you have understood it everything at the same time i will conduct a debate 
It means you uh, under your observation, under your self governance. You can also shoot yourself. You can take support from our tech, tech team. You need to, at least weekly once. Okay? Have a debate on uniform civil code. Okay? Well, arguments and counter arguments. So therefore, you will develop various skills regarding our interview process. Personality will also be transformed. And you will internalize ethics component in those lines. Okay? This is first point. And ethics is actually, ethics is going to be taught by Venkatesh sir, but mentorship is being done by me. That is the process, right? Next thing, peer to peer, peer to peer. This is second point, which is mentioned in our schedule. What is peer to peer? The beauty of this exam is not competition. It doesn't allow you to compete with others, actually. It actually demands you to have a peer-to-peer -peer understanding, peer-to-peer -peer evaluation, peer-to-peer -peer monitoring. A very good peer support is required for this exam. Otherwise, it is very difficult for you to clear this exam. Okay? This is, uh, this is uh, individualistic at the same time, a collective preparation. Most of the aspirants who clear this exam have said, I have a very good team, peer team, peer group. We together prepare. Even a third ranker who is from Narayan Pet, from Mahabubhana, uh, combined district. She said, we have, we are five people who used to discuss regularly for one hour, regularly one hour, third rank, okay? One hour. And we have, uh, and also we used to spend a good time with us. We all are like-minded, therefore, it is easy for us to clear this examination because they, they don't feel anything stress because it is not an isolated exam. You need a peer support. If you are isolated, you are away from examination also. You will not get any kind of input. But the team should be very much dedicated, as much dedication as you have. Right? So, if you are not dedicated, you don't disturb others. Simple. Next, study hall and library, as you have mentioned, as you need to use your study space effectively. So, fresh hours, early hours are beautiful hours which you need to spend some time. And third, for, uh, as RRR, what is RRR? Reading, recalling, revising, and also reproduce. Right? This is the concept. Next, CSAT is very much, as I have said, it is a regular exercise. And CSAT part. And dedicated mentor as I am doing that one part. Okay? And next, self assessment report. Self assessment report, it is, it is very important. Because in, in your schedule, we have mentioned clearly that you have four components and exam is fifth component. Just rate yourself, five star rate. Suppose, if you haven't completed CSL this day, just G, make yourself, reduce your star marking. If you haven't completed history sufficiently, just give half star to history. Okay? You have prepared well, but you haven't performed in the exam hall well. Therefore, reduce one star. Give only four stars. Okay? So, this is your genuine introspection, whether you are following properly or not. Two GS subjects, one CSAT, one current affairs, and one? One? Examination. Okay? These five components, whether you are following it properly or not, you have to assess yourself. And I will be monitoring you. But whether you assess yourself or not, you should take them print out first of all and keep it you keep it with you and assess yourself immediately after it starts. And it is going to be started on 24th July onwards. Okay? Meanwhile, we are preparing and doing some research and content. Mostly it is done. Okay, we are one month ahead of the actual uh, schedule. So, it, it, therefore, it will not be disturbed. Only thing that we need to update regularly is current affairs part. Right? So, 24th onwards, this program is going to be started. Meanwhile, a uh, few classes and just do some warm up. Have a regular exercise of waking, waking up early in the morning. Do, just, you don't need to prepare anything. Just uh, exhaust yourself physically. Okay, go to sports and go to running or something else, whatever you want to do. But 
This is a warm up time. In, in, in one week, you should be able to wake up early in the morning. Enjoy the early morning breeze. And I am also coming, I am also being with you, right? Early in the morning, early hours. Just, I will wake you up. Let's go for a walk. Okay? Or sometimes, just uh, start preparation. I will be making content, I will be doing content along with you. While you are preparing, I will be doing content here only. Because I have to prepare, right? Okay? This is our schedule. If I start my schedule morning 4 a.m., I will end my schedule. That means the preparation schedule. I will end by 1 p.m. Or mostly 2 to 3 p.m. I have class. And here, and 3 to 4 p.m. I will be having class at girls' campus. So mostly from morning 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. I will be ending my schedule. Therefore, can, can't you prepare for yourself that uh, from morning to evening, at least from 5 to 5? It is not a difficult task. Okay. At the same time, when you go to Dairad, you have to wake up early in the morning at 5 o'clock, right? Okay, even you will be sent to trekking and in those low cold breezes. So, okay, fine. Next thing, PYQs, daily and weekly tests. This is our basic philosophy uh, in which every component has to be covered. This is uh, about 240 pages of schedule. We have included few holidays also, don't get worried. Okay. Uh, the working days will be 300 days exchange. But in between, before conducting a grand test, I will be giving two days gap. Suppose uh, before Dasra, you would have completed 50 days. Day 51 will start after Dasra. Okay, we don't we haven't given any date here. Because it is little flexible for us to amend like our constitution. It is neither rigid nor flexible. Okay. Similarly, by the time of Sankranti, you will have, you will have completed 150 days schedule. The Day 151 will start after Sankranti. Okay? Suppose you will, you will be having a grand test on entire GS1. Sir, actually you have given as per schedule only one day for revision. So please give us two more days. Therefore, the GS1 grand test will be conducted on day 40. Day 40 will be conducted after two days. Okay, day 39 is completed till this, till this day and the day, th day 39 is revision day. So, I am extending day 39 for 3 days. In our schedule also, day 39 continued, day 39 continued, day 39 continued and day 40. Okay, for our internal understanding, this is. Okay, according to your comfort, it is not a rigid imposition which is being done by us. Okay. Sometimes. So, this is a scientifically designed plan, therefore, and second aspect is how peer to peer analysis has to be done. How peer to peer analysis has to be done. Suppose you get to know how you should score yourself. How will you get scored? Because I will be evaluating. But you should know that this is the right line of thought that I have to develop. So, here, if you, if you go to schedule part, you will get evaluation parameters. Do you see evaluation parameters? How many of you are carrying mobile phones? Okay, very good. Please go through the schedule once. See, feedback for each question. See, what is actual uh, percentage of a topper in the original examination UPSC? Yes, Kenneth, watch it. What is actual percentage of a topper? First ranker, second ranker, third ranker. The how much percentage they get usually? 50, 55 in between. 55 is highest in China. Nobody can reach that easily. Okay, with respect to optional, they can get 60 percent, right? So, 50 in between 50 to 55 is highest. What about remaining for 50 percent? So, can't I get 9 marks out of 10 or 10 out of 10 as you get in your CGP? in a degree examination because you are also art student you are getting 90 percent 95 percent right but why are you not getting in the original civil service examination so simple here the scientifically scientifically designed uh, parameter this is go to each of the components relevance content competency coherence and language proficiency or competency and finally presentation skill okay these are five broad parameters with respect to relevance what do you require 
your answer should be very thematic in nature in the introduction itself suppose if i ask you a question regarding indus valley civilization and their artistic sensuality something but you have written indus valley civilization is one of the prominent civilization in the ancient times so and so period next question i have asked what are the inputs that i can derive from indus valley civilization for the present day admiration right this is second question and you have written an introduction that indus valley civilization is one of the prominent civilization in the ancient times so and so period is it suitable yes so actually examiner expects you to have a thematic introduction what is the theme in theme in the first question and what is the difference between the second question actually first and second question here the first question is focusing on about its artistic sensuality and second is about urban inputs that you can derive from indus valley so you need to address that theme in the introduction part therefore you can build coherence from introduction to body right i have written about indus valley civilization so on so period and immediately i am putting a heading like artistic sensuality in indus valley civilization is there any connection between the introduction and the heading that i have put is there any connection no if i have written something else indus valley civilization is known to have these 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 artistic sensualities and okay and pottery sculpture i mean uh, bronze sculpture and seated uh, beaded priest likewise if i mention something else in the content, content part also is it relevant to actual theme of the question or not it is definitely relevant so the it should have coherent i means a connection it should be interlinked with the actual theme of the question right and second aspect introduction should be theme and conclusion should also be thematic and the content should be relevant if i give you an example regarding great bath is it a relevant example okay suppose i have asked about cult sculpture okay if i ask about sculpture but you are writing in the content that great bath is an example is it relevant is it is part of architecture but you are giving it as an example for sculpture so is it suitable no so the content should be relevant so relevance is the soul of the answer so you need to assess yourself that whether i am giving relevant introduction including the content with examples and the conclusion whether it is thematic or not and also your attitude okay in the attitude part do you have this positive optimistic and balance of judgment without any prejudice and stereotypism right that is more important isn't it as a bureaucrat what should be your attitude okay pause yes balance of judgment you should not be prejudgmental before judging but judgment is required okay because you are going to become a district magistrate you should be a judge but without prejudgment it means simply you should not estimate a person based on gender caste religion something second thing objectivity impartial and apolitical you should not have any kind of political inclination and affiliation with any ideology isn't it next uh, reliability honesty and integrity empathy compassion and emotional intelligence these are the required qualities while writing answer therefore you will be more objective in nature right you will get uh, more marks next thing content competency whether you are following these lines or not that is more important while writing answers okay i will be evaluating your grant is fine i will be giving you inputs also after seeing your answers but that is not the actual case you need to internalize yourself first will you internalize or not that is ultimately whose responsibility to build that kind of attitude okay because in your answers you will be reflecting your attitude i cannot change it until you are uh, preparing yourself okay so and also you need to judge yourself by taking help from a peer, peer group not by yourself you have to show your answers to suppose uh, mirin has to show answer to okay, kenneth like that okay satvik you have to show your answers to somebody likewise you need to show answers to someone and get evaluated and get a proper feedback like i have mentioned here for relevance part for relevance part you will be having how much weight is here 
suppose it is a 10 marker question 2 marks relevance for content content means illustrations examples case studies testimonies and the dimensions that you provide this is content isn't it next coherence part coherence right every element that you mention that means the word the line of thought that should be always thematic in nature as i have mentioned right core essence of the question must be must be mentioned there and interlinking of each of the compartments of the question is also very important okay disconnection disconnected statements disconnected introduction conclusion is not allowed okay so flow of uh, expression clarity of thought and concept these are uh, these all are part of coherence so clarity of thought and concept simple suppose if you are interlinking geographical phenomenon with the academic geography you should have absolute conceptual clarity okay the impact of monsoon on economy of our country these these both are mostly mostly interlinked therefore this concept will understand the geographical phenomenon with the economic impact and impact on gdp and agriculture gdp especially it has to be interlinked with your coherence ability sentence construction cohesive sentence construction they must be aligned with each okay you should not elaborate much you should have a concise writing skill that is your conceptual understanding in aligned with concise writing skill and also relevant jargon and keywords right and grammatical competence and finally the presentation part presentation involves your flow charts or maps or graphical representation or trends and pattern that you show in the utraf and also a legible presentation in terms of uniform letter size uniform word to word and line to line spacing what happened uniform line to line and word to word spacing and uniform letter size that you need to build a structured coherent structure examiner should feel emotionally well about you if he because your copy is compared with 10 people 1 is to 10 in the mains examination out of 10 you should be the topper that should be the presentation skill that you must show in the form of language competency and also the uniform structure in terms of word letter and font size everything so this stand template you need to build so finally examiner must feel pleasant about your reading i mean while reading your paper should feel pleasant so this is presentation skill so each component has 20% weightage and there are five five broader parameters okay five broader parameters will be having 100% right so each percent each parameter is having 20% weightage so if you, you are writing relevant answers but number of dimensions are less okay so for content part how many marks you will be you will be awarding yourself means you will be awarding to your friends suppose half mark because number of dimensions are less right number of points examples your validation to your point is less so one mark mostly one mark is very huge so if you award yourself relevance part if you are writing relevant points only the, therefore one mark is sufficient but number of points are less therefore you can reduce your scores and language is sufficient language it is not legible and also you are not concising you are express, expressing it much elaborately therefore you need, you can award half mark to one mark right similarly uh, like this uh, how many marks you will get for your presentation your flow chart is actually not providing flow of expression rather than it is disturbing the flow of answer okay you will you will make it a design rangoli there okay so therefore exam you will award you as a half mark because examiner feels it is disturbing the flow of expression if examiner is feeling therefore he will award you as a less marks means you should award your friend less marks and also i will i will give you less marks okay half mark or one mark so if you give extraordinary presentation i will show you few top of copies who are writing here and very soon your elder, elder brothers will get ranks here from here only you i will be showing their answers okay whenever they select interview i'll show you here also few students who are going to be selected for appsc interview 
who are preparing who prepared here for APPC Nirantar Sadhana. So, this is our uh, planning. You will get to know the skills of answer writing and self assessment report every day and peer to peer analysis and mentoring and also mentor support. This is one year schedule, a dedicated mentorship schedule. Till now, you might have prepared something or might not be confident at all. It is not at all important for me. Now onwards, you will be revising entire 1250 marks. 1250 marks. Okay, entire GS. In next 214 days. Including few holidays. And also if we include few more holidays and also our academic exam something. Mostly within 250 days. Okay, in 250 days, you will be practicing 10,000 plus MCQs, 1500 plus main questions and answers. Is this sufficient or not? Actually, that is a preparation standard set for direct IAS aspects. But I am introducing it for you. Initially, our management felt that is it possible for our students to cope up with that kind of standard? No. Actually, our students can do better than them. That is my confidence. Let me take this kind of a small initiative and implement it. Because what will you do every day? You want to attend only the classes for a complete day. For the last two years, you have been attending classes, right? Until you learn yourself, until you commit mistakes yourself, until you develop yourself the skills, irrespective of your immense knowledge that you have attained from classes and your academic exams, irrespective of that. Your actual knowledge is only 10%. Okay? If you learn yourself, if you commit mistakes, if you analyze yourself and also analyze others and a cooperative competition, if you bring that kind of environment, a study environment and regular practice sessions and skill development, the productivity will be very maximum in nature. Right. Okay? This is the only age that you can set your mind. If you attend, especially if people like you, who, who attends 22-23 years of age, you will not listen to our words. Okay? This is the only age that you can set your mind. This is the youngest age. A person who is not predetermined more, more in most of his age. A person who attains 25 years of age, it is very difficult for us to change the attitude of that person. Therefore, their selection will also become very difficult, actually. The number of people who are getting selected in the first early, early stage of attempts is more than that of later stages of attempts. Okay? The first attempt is the best attempt and you should be able to crack this examination. I want top 10 ranks from our D3 only. So, what is your actual eligibility age to attempt this exam? 2025? 2025, everybody is able to attain that age, eligibility. You will be completing 21 years. By 2024, how many of you are completing 21 years? No. By 2025, everybody is going to complete their age. Right? In degree final year also, you are eligible to apply for UPS examination, but you must have attained 21 years of age. Okay? Most of you might have given wrong date of birth, I don't, I know, no problem, isn't it? You want to reduce your age. Okay, what is your genuine date of birth? If you can see your genuine date of birth, okay. And most of the students are having date of birth only in the August times, in the month of August. When parents want their kid to have, uh, I mean, kid must have born before August in the date of birth certificate, yeah, before August 1st. Because UPSC considers, in anyway, most of the government exams consider 1st August as a threshold, I mean, actual uh, demarcation, right? So, by 2025, you should be able to give full length attempt. Okay, this year you will be completing 1250 marks, and next year optional is sufficient for you. You can make it within four to five months and you can also do a second revision optional before going to preliminary examination notification itself. After prelims notification, you will be writing, after prelims notification, you will be writing essay, ethics, daily contemporary updation and optional apart from your preliminary examination including CSAT. 
because you, are, you will get habituated with that kind of preparational orientation. For next two years, this is your target. If you make it, then we can break it. Definitely, we can make, make it possible, right? So, uh, July 24th onwards, be ready to get tortured by me, but it is most friendly in nature, okay? So, who, who uh, in, you have a choice to choose another option if you don't want this kind of joyful, stressful preparation, okay? You can go to another profession because you are going to deal with 10, 15 types of COVID-19 after 5 years in the form of artificial intelligence, machine learning and the internet of things. Suddenly a cyber attack occurs, entire satellites will get uh, attacked by cyber uh, fellows, these were uh, the goons. So, what will happen? You No mobile works for next one week. No electricity for next one week. Okay. After five years, everything is based on Internet of Things. Even your signaling system is based on Internet of Things. Okay. No online classes. No support. Suppose, without electricity, without mobile phone, is it possible for a police personnel to handle our present situation? The crime rate. How will you be able to control the crime rate? What should be your approach at that time? That is actual leadership quality that you have to attain, that kind of stress you need to bear. If you want to bear that kind of stress, you will be more stressed in the examination hall. That is why they are giving much tougher questions compared to previous years, especially the CSAT and Prims part, GS1. So, did we have this kind of situation that without electricity, without mobile phone 100 years ago? Did we have? Did we have? We had a situation, right? But there are there were 33 crore people during the time of independence who were living in this country without electricity, without mobile phone. But how was it possible? Lot of peace and harmony. How was it possible? Because there was a community and collective effort. Where have you gone, Vishnu? Till now, where have you gone? Entire session is over, right? Almost I am going to leave now. Okay, please sit. Okay, see, see this video. Actually, it will be uploaded in the YouTube channel, right? You must see this video. It will be uploaded in YouTube channel. Okay, this session is over almost. So this is our orientation session. Have you got full clarity now? How many of you say yes? No, it is very dull. Yes, yes sir. Yes. So you are going to travel with me for next one year, okay? So July, you should prepare your mind by July 24th, all the best, thank you.